This is Barrent with Kine Motorsports and I'm showing a video on how to uh, make the electrical connections for our 18 FET Zicheng sine wave controller. So this is our controller. Some of you have asked what the dimensions of the controller are, so here you go. The length is about 8 and 5 eighths or 220 millimeters long. The width is about three, three and five eighths, or about uh, 93 millimeters wide. And the height, the height is just under two inches, or about 40, 48 millimeters tall. So those are the dimensions. The tabs on either side stick out about a half inch on either side. And here's the connector assembly. So let's go through the connectors real quick here. This uh, two-wire lead here with a red and yellow is your ignition. So that's your ignition circuit. The way the ignition circuit works is uh, you essentially have uh, the red lead uh, taps directly into the battery positive in the, on the board of the controller and the yellow lead goes to the ignition circuit on the board. So to turn the unit on, you simply uh, jump the two leads together. Uh, if you purchase our throttle in conjunction with our controller, the throttle does have an on-off button. Okay, th that's this button right here. The bottom push button is the ignition or the on-off button. And at the end of the throttle is a uh, connector here with two wires. It's a blue and a gray wire. And you would simply just plug that into plug that into the uh, ignition on the ignition connector and, uh, and that would turn the unit on and off by the press of this button. Alternatively you could hook up a key switch uh, or you could permanently uh, enable it uh, with just with a simple jumper. Um, but uh, we, we highly recommend purchasing the throttle. makes it easy to turn the unit on and off. The next connector we have, uh, this one here, this is a female 6-pin JST-SM connector. Uh, it looks very similar to the Cycle Analyst connector. In fact, it's the same uh, female side connector, uh, except these are the hulls. So, uh, in this case, we have the uh, plus 5 volt in the ground and then we have the yellow, green, and blue phases uh, for the hall sensor. Uh, some of the motors that we sell have dual sets of hall sensors, meaning they have um, two outputs from the motor. You would only need to connect one of the outputs to this connector from the motor. Uh, the, the second output, if there is one on the motor, uh, is redundant. It's a spare. Uh, so in case your hall sensors go bad um, on one side of the motor, you can use the other side hall sensors. The five pin connector here is the programming header uh, that has five, uh, five leads, yellow, green, black, blue, and red. Uh, you can use this to program if you have the special cable uh, as well as the software. Um, at the moment, the software is not user friendly, it's in Chinese, and we pretty much do all of the uh, programming here. Um, uh, for now, uh, we don't offer uh, cables or, or how-tos for how to program it yourself. Uh, it is rather cumbersome and, and uh, tricky to set up, so we don't recommend um, uh, users uh, program uh, these units. Uh, if you have specific requirements, you can let us know, and we can program it here before we send it out to you. The thick wires here, uh, they're kind of stiff and they're thick. These are actually 4 millimeter uh, squared uh, battery and phase wires. Uh, red and black would be the battery, positive and negative, and then your green, blue, and yellow would be your phase wires. These, uh, these three, the phase wires, would go to the motor, matching colors for the Muxus motors we sell, and then uh, red and black, obviously, to the battery. The other connectors you have for this unit, uh, you've got one connector that's uh, EBS. This is your electric brake signal. This is a four-pin connector. Uh, however, only two of 
the pins in the four pin connector are populated. This is the uh, the cycle analyst standard uh, con uh, e-brake connector configuration. Uh, we do this so that if you're using the cycle analyst in conjunction with uh, these units, uh, the brakes uh, plug in, uh, you don't have to rewire the brake connectors. Uh, this unit here, this is your cycle analyst connector. You have your battery positive and uh, ground, uh, your shunt positive and negative, your speed, uh, which essentially just goes to one of the halls, uh, the hall signals, and then you have your throttle signal, which is the green one on the end. So that plugs into your cycle analyst. If you so choose to use a cruise, this is just a push button uh, set, and uh, it's a white two pin Molex connector. Uh, we don't have any uh, cruise uh, capable devices that we sell with this unit, um, but it is available if you want to set up your own push button cruise setup. We have our throttle, which is the three pin. JST SM connector. This is the female side of the connector. And again, this matches the cycle analyst standard. And then we have the three speed switch. Um, this is also a three pin JST SM connector. This is the male side of the connector. Uh, under no circumstances should you plug these two together. Okay, these go to individual devices. With our throttle, okay, here's our throttle again. We talked about the push button. Um, so we also have a three-way uh, speed switch or power level switch, um, low, medium, and high, um, uh, as well as a hull effect throttle, uh, throttle. So we've already talked about the two-pin connector being for the ignition. So the, the mating connectors, the connectors with the um, positive uh, ground and white wire, the, that's for the throttle. And that would, if you're not using it, uh, cycle Analyst version 3, the throttle would connect to the controller like here. Uh, three speed switch, which is the yellow, brown, and, and green wires. Again, the three pin connector would go to the, the mate uh, at the controller. Uh, if you're using a Cycle Analyst version 3, we have a special uh, uh, extension that you can use to extend your throttle signal up to the cycle analyst. So let me show you that. So if you purchase uh, one of our controllers with a cycle analyst version 3 and a throttle, uh, we're going to send you one of these extension cables. And the purpose of the extension cable is to allow you to connect the throttle. Okay, so we'll, you, we'll plug the extension to the, the throttle connector, which is, if you remember, is the red, black, and white Okay. okay, so we've plugged in our extension cable to the, the throttle output. The red, black, and white leads from the throttle. Okay, and that goes to our extension. So when you're mounting it on your bike, this will go back up to the handlebars, and the other two, con uh, the other two leads from your throttle uh, would still terminate at the controller. This going up to the cycle analyst, would then attach to the throttle. So here is, so here is the throttle. So you would connect that extension lead to the throttle input at the cycle analyst. So now we have uh, a full setup here. I'll show you the e-brake uh, connectors as well. Uh, what we do with the e-brakes uh, on the condition of having a cycle analyst version three. Uh, the controller needs an e-brake signal and the cycle analyst also needs an e-brake signal and so what we do we use the left e-brake handle and we f we input that into directly into the cycle analyst so there's our e-brake connection so left the front brake goes to the cycle analyst and the rear brake the right which uh, is going to control your regenerative braking at your motor that will wire directly to the controller so the EBS EBS output to the controller. So right to the controller, left to the cycle analyst. Uh, when I brake, I'll usually brake with both front and back. Um, 
you can brake with just the back if you want to re use regenerative braking. You can brake with just the front if you don't want regenerative braking. Uh, I, I myself prefer the regenerative braking. Uh, we have the cycle analyst connected to the CA output for the controller. Uh, again, the throttle. We have the two leads going to the three-speed switch and the ignition. And then we have the throttle output going on the extension back up to the handlebars and back to the back of the cycle analyst. Okay, So that is our setup. Again, that's the hall sensor connector which goes to the motor as well as your, your three phases and your battery. Uh, in this in this case uh, with the cycle analyst we do not have to connect anything to the controllers throttle input okay remember the cycle analyst is feeding the throttle signal through the cycle analyst connector right through this green wire so that's how the controller is getting the throttle signal so this would be empty in this case uh, the cruise we don't have anything enabled on the cruise and here's an alternative connection without the, the cycle analyst uh, in this case, since we only have one input to the uh, for the brake on the controller, we would just connect our rear or right brake to the controller. That'll engage our regenerative braking. Left brake would uh, ultimately you could use your original brake from your bike. You don't have to use this one. Uh, if you prefer, you can actually parallel the two brake sets together, uh, just matching red and blue wires uh, from each brake lever. Parallel those two signals together. And then, again, both of those would then plug into the single uh, input to the controller. Then you could use either brake to engage the regenerative braking. Uh, the differences with the throttle um, is the only difference is we don't loop back up to the handlebars. Uh, we plug the, the throttle uh, output from the throttle directly to the throttle connector. The throttle connector to the controller. So that's the simple setup, e-brakes and throttle with ignition and three-speed switch. So a little bit about phase wires and battery terminals. We recommend using XT150 connectors. Uh, these are examples of XT150s. You have the female side on the left here and the male side on the right, as well as the housings associated with those fittings. I will typically install the female side to the controller. Okay, I'll cut these off and I'll solder on um, the female side XT150 connectors for the three phases. And then the male side will connect to solder on to the phase wires from the motor. Uh, when you're soldering on, you want to make sure and slip the, the, the sleeve on first before you solder on the connector and then the sleeve pulls up this way to the connector. So you have need to make sure and install the, the plastic housings on the wire first before you um, solder that connection for the for the XT150 connectors. For the battery, uh, the controller side is the male pins. Okay, this is the male side of the XT90 battery connector. Uh, it's got the pins and then the housing is a female. Uh, and then the reverse of that, the, the, uh, the female pins and the male housing, okay, this would go towards your battery. Um, whether you have a lunacycle battery um, or you build your own battery or you, you create a special harness to use LiPo, uh, this would be your output, your primary output to the controller. Uh, one thing to keep in mind with XT90 connectors is the beveled side is your battery negative. There's an embossing on the connector. Okay, now this side is the negative, and if I flip that over, the other side has the positive. Okay, so that's positive side and negative. So the beveled side is always negative, and then same positive on the square side and negative on the on the beveled side. And I just have some uh, quick comments about uh, setting up your cycle analyst uh, properly. Uh, for use with these controllers. We test our controllers, um, we test the shunt resistance of, the, of all of our controllers and they'll vary from uh, anywhere from 0.85 up to about 1.00 uh, milliohms. 
and uh, this one happens to be 0 .0 or 0 0.98 milliohms. And so what we're going to do is we're going to set up our cycle analyst to have the proper shunt resistance. And so the way we do that is we hold down the left button, and that brings us into the setup mode. Uh, you can set up your speedometer by programming in your tire size, uh, battery. Again, you can set up your battery voltage. Uh, here we're just scrolling uh, with the right button here. We're scrolling through the setup menu items. Uh, throttle in. We can map our throttle. Uh, throttle out. Again, we're mapping our throttle. Set up speed limits, power limits, PAS sensor if you have one, torque sensor. Uh, temperature sensor uh, we can also set up. Uh, the Muxus motors do have temp sensors. Uh, that's the sixth white wire from the motor uh, that does not connect to the hull, hull uh, connector. You'll notice the input from the motor has the sixth wire populated, which is the white wire. The output does not have a, a white wire, but you can uh, run an extended lead from that connector up to the temp sensor input for the cycle analyst. So there's your temp and there's your pins and uh, that's your connector and you can set up your temp sensor. Uh, I'm not going to show that now though. Uh, set up calibration. So this is the uh, this is what we want to set up to represent our shunt resistance. So we're going to go into this mode here so once we get to this then we're just going to hold down the the right button and that'll allow us to program the the shunt. Uh, we, we're good with low range that just uh, refers to the uh, uh, the total power of the system uh, in this case it's the low range. So now we can adjust the R shunt value. So again I'm going to hold down the right button okay, and it allow me to to change the numbers. Now I can go up Actually, left is down and right is up. Okay, in this case, we want 0 0.98. So, uh, once you have the proper number, then just hold down the right button, okay, for about a couple seconds, and then we'll move to the next number. We're going to go down with this number. We want it to be zero. Hold the right button again, again, okay, and now we, we want 98. Okay, so I'm just going to go down to nine. Hold the right button down twice to 8, hold the right button. Uh, we're going to leave that at 0, so I'm just going to hold the right button down again. Okay, so now we're set 0 0.980 milliohms, 0 0.98. Okay, so we match our shunt resistance, so our power, our amperage readings, or our current readings uh, will be accurate as displayed on the cycle analyst. Okay, and then we just keep pressing right until it leaves the setup, and uh, we're back to the main screen.